So welcome back everyone. It's Stacy. I was doing some gel plate printing. This is kind of my messy plate and what's left over. We're going to do a pull off of here and I am going to make a spread using this photo in my journal. We're going to do a little gel plate printing for texture and I'm going to use this photo and some other scraps and create a page with it. So I'm going to do this because I'm interested in getting some of this pulled up, but not necessarily all of it. I want the dots, basically is what I'm going for. I was hoping some of this would pull up, but I didn't, that's really not the right paper. I'm gonna pull this up. Now, yes, you're not gonna see the white on there, but I was kind of hoping to pull up some of the color and then save this for something by putting other paint over it. So I was trying to get some of this off, which is happening. And I don't want this to be so pronounced. I want this to be more subtle, I would say. I just want to wipe some of this away so it doesn't look so contrived. So today I'm looking for contrast. That's sort of my thought process was, uh, what, what can I use for contrast? I'm going to put a little bit of something dark on there and try to pull another print. So we're going to put just a little black and I'm going to pull some of this. And actually, I wasn't going to pull the whole thing, but there's such great color down here that if I could get some of it off, I want to use it. So I'm looking for texture. That is all. So that might have been a little too much paint, but I never give up. I never give up on these things. So the part that I wanted most didn't really come out. So maybe we'll attack this at a different way, but you can see there's a lot of good pieces of color that maybe I could rip out and use in my collage that I make. What we learn is that a thinner coat of paint is better for lifting some of this stuff. So. I'm about to try that. This is just, it's a little bit heavier copy paper. It's not quite as thin as most copy paper. And while it's not lifting all of the bits off of my plate, and this is what I was hoping for. This is exactly what I was hoping for. So let's see if I can lift this. Get me, get a little more of that. There we go. So we have some texture and some color in there. So I'm going to use black and white and this violet. This is a violet color here from Amsterdam. So I just wanted to show you the two pulls. So this is the one I just pulled and this is the one I did before, which uh, really isn't much of anything. It just has some good texture on it. This is the photo that I wanted to use. This is from last week. I had it sitting on my desk and I was like, why waste this? So what began for me uh, with this process was I was looking for to make a very highly textured page. Just by tearing pieces out of this photo, I'm making this more mine than it was before. Now I'm gonna alter this and I loved the image because I thought it was a haunting of whatever this is flying back here. It looks like an owl to me, actually, but it could be a crow. I just decided that since I uh, just have a little bit here to paint, I'm going to use my Posca. I just don't want the edge showing as an edge, as a stark, you know, off-white. Now, I have this glue brush. I don't think I've used it very much. I don't even know, but we're going to try it. <laughs> I don't even know if it really will work, actually. Let's do that so we don't create too much of a mess. And I just basically want to get the glue down thick so that I can lay my first piece of paper there. And you can see there's still white here. I can touch that up. This doesn't go all the way to the edge over here, but we can work on that. And I'm gonna take probably my catalyst wedge and just kind of push it down a little bit. 
I kind of like this glue brush because it does get a nice, good, thick layer on there. Again, I'm going to push with my wedge to make sure that things adhere correctly. Question is, where did I want to go with this? So I need something or want something for in here. Now, I liked this spot right here. So this is uh, matte medium, so it's matte. It is not, it is not shiny. And that's what I wanted for this. And I feel like I want this piece right here. I feel like there's, this is a thick piece here that could maybe be the rest of the stem of this tree. I don't know. So that's what we're going with. Remember, this is our artwork. This isn't for anybody other than ourselves. So the point to the matte medium is you can get the medium all over and it gives you texture if you leave it textured, but it doesn't show up as shiny and something over top. And yet you can kind of get that feel for the over the top that something's over the top. I have a big sort of mess over there that I don't really care for. So I think what I might do here is rip off a small piece with my ruler there. So almost like a piece of washi tape that I could put right down the side and it would be So maybe like this. So I'm just going to put a little glue again. Down. Now I tell people to be careful with the gluing in the corners of your books. But there comes a time where I don't worry anymore. And I just go for it. Because it does pop your spine. And if that's important to you, then that might be something to think about. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a little bit of this black, which is golden, and I'm just going to kind of do the edges here. This is a more transparent bone black. Beauty wipe. And I'm not trying to be perfect. I want this to be a page that I completed today. I liked this image. I liked all that. I thought I wanted to use those dots, but I don't. I'm going to let this dry. Then I'm going to come back. And I'm probably going to do some, maybe some splattering with it. So I've got some acrylic ink, some white acrylic ink here. And I'm just dipping it into the ink, my brush. This is a very inexpensive brush I got at one of the stores. And I'm just tapping it in. I think it was the dollar store. One of those inexpensive stores. This is my Stabilo all pencil. And I'm just gonna kind of try to continue some branches. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Trees grow randomly, not perfectly. Nature is the most imperfect thing we have going, really, as a reference. Look around. Nothing is absolute, absolutely perfect. So something like that. The idea is that we've kind of anchored it into the piece. And by doing this addition, these additions, we've made it our own. And that's all we probably need. And 
and I'm gonna let that dry and I'll come back to it later I might do more in here for these colored I mean these white spots here that are or yellow spots just to not attract the eye out here so much And I'm going to call this a finished piece now. Okay, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I love the way this came out. I have my texture. I use my gel plate for this. I have a photo that I integrated into the art piece uh, just by drawing over top of it. That's basically all I really needed to do. And this made this page mo more cohesive to me. Uh, I don't worry about what's back here because uh, it's the dark part of the page. Um, this is the horizon. I can use my finger and kind of take away that hard edge if I wanted with that. And voila, my page is done. And I'm happy with it. I really love the way that came out. Okay, everybody, this is how to use your gel plate, a photo, and some printing scraps that maybe didn't come out perfect or weren't perfect or whatever, but you can use them for collage in a very eerie looking background like this. So thanks for being here and I'll see you next week.